The following program is intended for a mature audience. Viewer discretion is advised. This I've got to see. It's worth watching, so stay tuned. Of course, welcome. So again, this the topic today, it's all about the up leveling the lover archetype. So what I would love to do today actually is we're going to continue with the C note show as usual. And then about half of the way through, I would love to do a, a Q and a with all you guys. It is different. It is different. Jeff is not here. And this is really an opportunity I would love to serve in this way for you to ask the questions um, of a woman, of me, that maybe you've never asked before, maybe you've never thought to ask before, and you have Jason, and you have Rob, and you have Andy here as well. Um, nothing to me is off the table. I really appreciated when Jeff and I visited Tim in Texas a couple months ago, Jeff asked him a similar thing, and and Tim, who's so perceptive, you know, asked Jeff and me about, well, you guys are engaged. Are you ever actually going to get married? And I was so happy to answer that question. Uh, so nothing's off the table, and I absolutely welcome any all any and all questions that you have. Well, and it also it also led into the great follow up question of. Jeff, does Cynthia ever just lose her shit? <laughs> yes. When there's like drills being in the background and like people pounding on the side of the, the house during the C-note show, I guess I tend to lose it a little bit because I can't concentrate. All right. So we talked yesterday about, you know, what in King Warrior Magician Lover, we talk about the lover as there's there's the two poles, there's the addicted and there's the impotent and then there's the balanced. And I, there was also the introduction of, you know, what kind of kills the lover in all of us and then what brings it to life. And I'd also like to touch a little bit today on this idea of, of evolved sensory significance and how the lover uses his perception and what he sees in the world to uh, bring life and fire to that energy inside of him and how that's it's an evolutionary trait um, that's evolved for a reason and that women absolutely love. So just like yesterday, there's, uh, I'm gonna show a couple clips from the Graham Norton show. I love this uh, talk show because it brings on celebrities and stars and puts them on the couch and it's in England. And so these Americans are kind of held by their toes and there's this real like pulling back the curtain of who these men and women are uh, beneath the archetypes or the shadows or the shields they put on with their particular line of work. So today there's a, a couple clips from Samuel Jackson. And I wanted to ask you after these, in watching him, how do you see the lover archetype? And what does he demonstrate that like brings the lover to life? Oh. Apparently, you have recently lost your title as the highest grossing actor of all time. Yeah. yeah right. <laughs> I've been displaced by, yeah. by Harrison Ford again. I displaced him, yeah. he displaced me, but hey, it's only 70 mil. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's like a weekend. I got him covered in July. Yeah. That's a weekend. <laughs> yeah. weekend. He's lucky I'm not in Captain America 3 now. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen the new Star Wars? Yeah. Okay. All right. 
<laughs> Moving on. It would have been better with you in it. Yeah, that, that's really, yeah. That's, that's, that's the bottom line. <laughs> or more popular, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't be more popular. Yes, it could. <laughs> I, I, haven't, I haven't seen it, and I would have watched it if you were. In oh, it. see, right yeah. there, right there. Yeah. But you do watch all your films. Is this right? Yes, I do. Like more Religiously. than Religiously. <laughs> I do. I watch them at home. I I go to the theater. I know when I have a movie that's opening. I know it's going to make at least a thousand dollars that weekend because I buy a thousand dollars worth of tickets. <laughs> I give them to the church or I give them to somebody and their kids go. But I, I go in the movie after the movie's been open for a moment, you know, to see what normal people are saying or doing while they're watching the film, to see how they react to it. I mean, you go to a premiere, I mean, everybody's there to kiss your ass, you know? Come on. Yeah. <laughs> they're gonna love the movie. Oh, my God, you are amazing, you know? <laughs> and you go with some regular people and they go out of the movie and say, this movie sucked. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but that Sam Jackson was the shit. He's always the shit. You know, so. Yeah, I go. I like it. And if I'm sitting at home, yeah. yeah. And if I'm, you know, if I'm channel surfing, there's nothing else on. I I go into the search engine and go Samuel L. Jackson. Boom. <laughs> Is it true? So Samuel L. Jackson you, takes aren't a thing. Sam, you're not, you're not Sam, keen I'm on. I'm here to bear witness to the fact that Sam likes to move fast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Very true. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't vary that much. I'm not that actor. I do the same thing all the time. But sometimes, and I can speak from experience, like Sam is so charismatic, um, and he has been for as many years as you've been making movies. And sometimes... <laughs> but, but sometimes you're in a scene with Sam and you just kind of go out of the scene and you're just watching Sam mm -hmm. being Sam. <laughs> and it's really powerful and you go, hang on a second, what's my line? Uh, <laughs> I've only had that... Well, I was doing a movie with Dustin Hoffman and in the middle of the shot, Dustin just stops and goes, wait, cut, cut, Sam. I saw you. I said, you saw me what? I said, I saw you say to yourself, oh my God, that's Dustin Hoffman. You were amazed. You were amazed. <laughs> oh my God, I'm acting with Dustin <laughs> And then, so the question was, you know, watching Samuel Jackson, Jackson the first uh, clip he's talking about, you know, he goes to his own movies not so much as a, like um, letting people to come around and like you know puff me up and fill my ego, but he actually honestly wants to see how he's affecting others. And then in the second one, the second clip, gosh, there was there was a a lot of like I thought a lot of masculine love there and seeing of the power in others. So I'm curious when you watch him, when you watch Samuel Jackson. What do you see him doing to bring that lover archetype to life for him and maybe even those around him? Oh, Tim, yeah, thanks for raising your hand. Yeah, I'm, I'm off topic like usual, but I just like in the spirit of that last video, like every time I get on a Zoom call with you, I think, oh my God, I'm on a call with Jessica Chastain. And oh. then, and then I have to remember that you and Jessica Chastain are not the same person. So anyway, that's a thing. That's a huge, huge compliment. She goes on the Graham Norton show too. So <laughs> thank you so much. Hey Hans, thanks for coming in. Just so you know, I'm leading today and tomorrow. Jeff's in Arizona, but he'll be back on Monday. Uh, Matt, good to see you. Thank you for coming in and Ian and Jason. Uh, so the, Question, um, what does Samuel Jackson do? What does he breathe life into in terms of that, that lover energy? I would say positivity. Um, there you go. So I heard positivity. Okay, I wasn't quite sure who that came from, but positivity, yeah. And Jason, what, were, what was your input? Um, well, I was going to say the, the way he's sitting and the way he's carrying himself um, just makes it feel like he's comfortable. Well, actually, not just comfortable, rejoicing in his skin suit. <laughs> um, he's, he's just, he's just, I, I'm here, I'm feeling it. 
Um, oh, you complimented me. Yeah, I get that. I deserve that, right? Um, which is which is kind of what the lover is all about, you know. It's it's, it's kind of like uh, um, just rejoicing in what is, and then and then you know he talks about going to the movies, and like you said, he's he's appreciating everything that's going on, good, bad, whatever. Um, which is which is kind of what the lover does when he takes in the the scenery. He's everything is an input. Doesn't mean he's judging anything. It's just he's just everything is an input. Um, so he describes that experience. That's really lover to me. So wow, thank you for that. That that non judgment of whatever's coming in. Uh, that seems huge. I mean, what Jason just said was spot on in my opinion as well. Whenever I see and hear him speak, I always feel like I want to continue to hear him talk. I don't know what it is, but again, I think it is the way he just kind of carries himself and super cool without, it's just, you can tell that's who he is too. It's not like, oh, I got to do this thing on TV. I'm imagining him being the same way all the time. Yeah. Thank you for that. Yeah. If you, like, referencing what Jason said about how he was sitting, it's just, I like watching the guests on the show who are just like, yeah. <laughs> Uh, no element of nerves or they hide it or ground it really well. So yesterday, uh, uh, shared a little excerpt from uh, King Warrior Lover, uh, King Warrior Magician Lover, uh, specifically on the lover. And I just wanted to reiterate a portion of that that says he, the lover, wants to touch everything physically and emotionally. And he wants to be touched by everything. He recognizes no boundaries. And, and I put that in italics because I'd love to hear all of your input on the thought of that. Because I know so much of the work is about how to have boundaries. So what does that mean? So he recognizes no boundaries. He wants to live out the connectedness he feels with the world inside, the context of his powerful feelings and outside, the context of his relationship to other people. So it, I find, you know, as a woman and exploring feminine energy, uh, especially when I think of physical intimacy with a man. I love the idea of no boundaries because that to me feels like home and connected and sensual entwinement. And that doesn't mean it doesn't have its down. There are some downsides to that. Like Jason mentioned yesterday that, you know, when you're giving that to a woman and then you have to go be in warrior king mode, she's like, you're taking away that like non-boundary feeling. So what does it mean to all of you who have done and continue to do so much work? Um, Sergio, I see that you jumped on. It's good to see you. Um, what does it mean here when it says you there's no boundaries? What could that mean from a place of strength in your mindset and your beliefs? To watch the rest of this episode for free and other episodes, go to greatmenmovemountains.com slash VIP. Punch in your info and watch the rest for free. Get more affection, love, and sex in your marriage. Get less paralyzing fear and rejection. Never miss an episode. Watch anytime, anywhere, 3 a.m. on the toilet. Get full episodes. GreatMenMoveMountains.com forward slash VIP. The C-Note Show.